I am here with Eli Zabar of all the many, many restaurants, markets, upcoming wine store, all here on the Upper East Side of New York. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for having me here at Eli's Table. No, it's a pleasure to have you, Ali. Thank you. So today we're going to be talking mm. about a topic that is near and dear to pretty much everyone, mm. wine and cheese. But we're talking about how to properly pair. So where do you even begin when you want to have your wines pair well with the cheeses that you're eating? Well, you know, I, I think uh, we're making a bit too much of it, uh, <laughs> of, of the pairing story. Just I drink think, and I, eat it. No, I think, look, this is, this is my basic principle. Uh, mm -hmm. If a cheese has a lot of flavor, then the wine, whether it's white or red, needs to have enough flavor to, to, to support it and, and right. so that you can taste the cheese and taste the wine. And it's a kind of, it's a balanced story. You've paired yeah. four wines with four cheeses today um, to also kind of help people get ideas for where to begin. So maybe let's start with the Gorgonzola because I think that's an area where people say, oh, I have a blue cheese, like what can possibly go with it? So what have you paired with Gorgonzola and what goes well generally with blue cheeses? This is a mountain Gorgonzola, which is kind of a hardish, firmish mm. cheese as opposed to this soft, creamy Gorgonzola. You know, it's a country cheese. It's got a lot of flavor. Uh, and most blue cheeses do have a lot of flavor, so mm -hmm. um, we want to have a wine that's that's quite full. Right. Okay. So what are we pairing so today? So we've got a wine from the Ardèche. The Ardèche is the Ardèche is down in southwest of France. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very rugged country. They're sophisticated yet and co yet coarse. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think that that coarseness will marry well. By the way, look at the wine. It's it's it. it it's not like clear as water. It's, it's got some tannin in it, which means mm. it's a little bit of coarseness. So, but you, know, you it's need like, that with a stronger you cheese. Do, you I do. Mean, and you that's do. kind of yeah. the point, Other, right? right? Otherwise, what kind of happens is, if things are really out of balance, if the wine is so, if the wine is not strong enough, it tastes like you're drinking mm. water. I think any wine from the southwest of France mm. would go would go nicely with this. I think any. Uh, any of the wines from Piedmont, uh, which would be the Nebbiolo grape. Mm. This is Grenache uh, mm. and Carignan. Uh, these are two of the grapes that go into Chateau Neuf de Pop. Mm -hmm. But these are these are full flavored grapes. So what is the next cheese that we have? Okay, the next cheese is an Irish cheese. Mm. Uh, this is a washed rind cheese called Goubine. Goubine. And this is a very smelly cheese. Yeah. Okay, this cheese in a closed warm room would not make friends, okay? Uh, it would make friends uh, with me because right, I uh, like smelly cheese. Okay, and I do too. <laughs> and, and, and I do too. They're not, they don't taste like they smell. Right, so okay. when you're dealing with a smelly cheese but that right. doesn't have an incredibly strong flavor, right. perhaps in the same way that a blue cheese would, yeah. how do you even begin to think about the pairing? Well, okay, so in this case, I felt that a, I could not think of a white wine that would marry with this cheese. I, I, the, the, because, no. uh, you know, I don't think there's enough nose. You don't I, want the cheese to overwhelm the wine. I don't wine. want the cheese to overwhelm yeah. the wine. At the same time, we don't want a wine. That, we want a wine that, that has a good nose to it, but isn't too strong because this cheese is not very strong. Very, again, very, uh, wonderful nose. Uh, different, different than the mm -hmm. first one. It has a lot of the smell of leather. The grape is Nebbiolo. Mm -hmm. You do get a lot of tannin and you get lots of tastes and flavors in the in uh, um, in the wine yeah. so then what is our third cheese the nocciolo uh, it. which is an Italian country cheese this kind of cheese is one of my favorites and and again this kind of cheese is made many places in the world mm -hmm. and I want to hold it up and I want to point I don't know if you can see that it looks like a soft ripening cheese I, I love cheeses that have that kind of chalkiness mm -hmm. in the middle the inside is a blend of, of, of interesting mildly mild but flavorful contrast mm -hmm. and uh, and, the, and what is the type of milk going into this cheese? Uh, this is cow's milk. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's cow's milk. I like unpasteurized cheeses. So, so if you have a cheese with that much complexity, but that isn't that strong, what wine, what wine can we possibly taste? Okay, mm -hmm. 
the, the wines that are closest really to my heart are the Burgundy, are Burgundies, you know, right. Burgundy in France, you know, from top to the bottom, top to yeah. bottom, from north to south. But I mean, they're, they're very complex, there are a million different kinds. We are moving from the reds to a cheese that nicely supports a white wine. Yeah. But because so, this cheese is a particularly complex cheese, right. you really need to have a wine that stands up to it as right. well. Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Southern Burgundy, not, uh, uh, it, comes from near Pouli Fousset. They have a mineral quality to them, a rocky quality, like smelling rocks. Mm. Uh, and they, they, they produce very complex aromas. So what is our final cheese? Okay, our final cheese is something called a San Nectaire. French. I don't think it, the flavors are very complex. I've always liked, let's say, Tome de Savoie or country cheeses more. Mm -hmm. But I thought it would be a good example for this for this group right. because it's a country cheese, and yet it, it, the flavor is not strong. Right. It's and a the, light crowd pleaser. I, Exactly. Yeah. You're not going to offend. <laughs> you will not offend anyone with this cheese. You can lock and, this one in a room. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. I've paired this with from the Finger Lakes, and it's a Riesling, and this is really an extremely complex, very odoriferous, uh, uh, and yet dry, dry mm -hmm. wine. And why does a dry Riesling go so well with such a light cheese? Well, first of all, the, the Riesling grape has a very distinctive, th th these, these, are, these wines are not oak, they're mm -hmm. aged in, in stainless steel, okay? Yeah. So what you are really smelling is the grape, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is a Riesling grape. It has a wonderful nose, almost yeah. perfumey. Mm -hmm. Has a tinge, tinge of sweet of sweetness. I was to it. gonna say it's not quite dry. I mean, you wouldn't no. it's dry for a riesling, no. No. but it's not dry. Right. That mm. sweetness has a drop of yeah. a drop of apricot and a drop of honey in there. And I thought against this creaminess of yeah. the of the Saint Nectaire. So, well, that, Saint Nectaire isn't I wouldn't call it creamy, but but it's kind of, and it's not soft ripening. But against that texture, mm. that it would go very nice. So we got our perfect wine and our perfect cheese. Thank you so much for having us here at Eli's table. Really appreciate nice it. Nice to have you. Thank you.